Dobrý den, dámy a pánové. Je mi velkou ctí tady dnes být s vámi a podělit se s vámi o zkušenosti. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to share experience that I gained during the difficult period. Perhaps uh, if I were to do that again, I would think twice. But it's an um, experience or lesson I learned for your whole life. And it's also an opportunity. Crisis is not only a problem, but an opportunity too. Well, now I'd like to talk about the infrastructure that I'm at the head of, European Advanced Translation Infrastructure in Medicine, which is a part and parcel of uh, ERIC, that is European uh, Innovation Consortium. Well, we have got involved in testing, we shared and joined large uh, research infrastructure in the fight against pandemic. I would also like to talk about the development of diagnostic tools and I'll present or introduce some other research in infrastructures that will speak in the afternoon. So we just wanted to, or I just want to highlight that we are up and running and uh, do act uh, as a complex as a set. What is it like such an infrastructure? Well, it's a train that uh, uh, is composed of individual um, research infrastructures, individual scientists or researchers, and it runs on uh, buildings or structures. In this case, it is the train. It's all organized in the form of platforms like small molecules in case of uh, TRIS, MPMPs, uh, imaging, biomarkers, vaccines. And all those five uh, platforms actually get involved in uh, trying to grapple with uh, the COVID-19 associated crisis. Now, uh, it is financed, uh, I, I mean, it's uh, in, uh, by individual member states, and the train is uh, led by board of international or national directors with respect to research and coordination office, which is uh, in Amsterdam. What is uh, the objective? To translate uh, uh, scientific discoveries into medical practice or products, so we are very close to application or um, at least in the field of uh, biomedicine. I will not go to details because I don't have uh, much time. The individual products like biomarkers, vaccines, etc., etc., since this is highly regulated, uh, have to meet many requirements, like in case of drugs. There has to be well, first, uh, I mean, clinical trials, um, first target selection candidate, phase zero, one, two, etc. And uh, then it goes up to the proof of concept, that is discovery phase, exploratory proof of concept, confirmatory phase. And all that is uh, done by Green and, uh, and uh, the commercial by pharmaceutical companies. Each actress has um, ten. Uh, institutes involved or establishments, and uh, we are in charge of uh, the um, uh, coordination. I'm very happy we have uh, uh, former Minister Kopitsova who actually signed the contract. Uh, that was the first of April, uh, April uh, 20. 10, but it was uh, not the full stay. Uh, we were 
were granted the funds for the project. The investment, obviously, both that uh, part from European Union as well as co-financing from the national budget was more than uh, efficient and effective. So cost-effective coronavirus is a good example of uh, the successful results and that it has simply paid off. Uh, Mr. Konvalenka already said that uh, the first laboratory that was approved for testing, since we had all the certificates necessary, they are certified uh, workplace together with Olomos Hospital. We are a high capacity uh, place since we are one of the open screen, had no led by Mr. Bartuniak in the Czech Republic. This high capacity methods, high performing methods, we used for testing small molecules. Uh, we had diagnostics, um, everything. So we launched the tests um, pretty soon, and we have still been testing, and perhaps uh, never will put an end to that. So uh, this uh, wrap up part, your welfare uh, part, uh, and with them, I don't think we'll ever have that. What were the challenges we had to do? Information tool, IT tool for our academic. Um, facilities we needed establishments they had nothing they could use uh, to control or rather manage this uh, we do data stewardship in medicine that means collection data mining storing etc and in order to be able to analyze data to have uh, continuous um, access to it we had to prepare a number or develop a number of uh, platforms. Clean data, clinical data, preclin data from animal models and mm, preclinical testing, all that is um, digitized. Uh, there is an open access there too, so it can be used without any obstacle motivation. Um, well, once we had the system ready to collect clinical data and we knew the level laboratory systems um, do not, uh, cannot simply cope with this uh, COVID data. Therefore, we decided to uh, simply adjust clean data portal and um, create the so-called COVID-IT system. What made us do it? Because to begin with, we got all the uh, samples with request form uh, in a paper form. Uh, you have uh, this request form, which affects um, the uh, vessel. Then, we, in the best case, we had the birth uh, uh, day number. We could forget all the wrappings or whatever it was uh, brought in in pails, buckets, literally said. Which was impossible to work with, so we could not do that. We had to, uh, I mean, develop scanners and scan it all those papers, and we had to enter it into laboratory IT or hospital IT. And just imagine that, even if it takes 10 minutes to uh, digitize one request pay in a paper form, it means 83 hours a day if you had 500 samples or specimen a day. So obviously there was no way to, to do it that uh, way. Um, therefore, we um, had a central system uh, that was actually then run by uh, the RPHA, COVID application forms done by um, Czech Army and military simply and tested people had to receive the results uh, through SMS. Um, if you test 10,000 persons a day, and uh, when the epidemic uh, climaxed, it was almost 10,000 people tested a day. So you couldn't call 10,000 people. And 95% of the results were negative. To call them and tell them while you are negative, it would be a waste of time. So 
we developed this uh, system of sending the negative results through SMS. And those a couple of a few positive cases, of course, uh, by people whom we called and informed. Now we still have the issuance of free from infection certificate uh, that is um, in the form of an electronic um, doc. So I don't think we should go through all the data. Uh, it doesn't make sense. But um, apart from what I've already said, you can send automatically the results. Uh, you send it to ISIN database, uses. Uh, you send uh, SMSs on an hourly basis. You send the data and to the central management system of the um, smart quarantine and uh, also basic statistics are uh, collected. Uh, it's uh, very functional, very helpful, simply. It does work as an independent uh, system, an elaborate system, and it's also some sort of add-on to the existing uh, laboratory system. And if uh, someone doesn't have it, they can, I mean, uh, get it, of course. Now, clean, uh, clean data. Uh, there we have 25,000 individuals already um, in this um, clinical data stewardship. And we also used it in other studies uh, that uh, we uh, did. Uh, more than 22,000 examinations were processed data-wise, and it will be uh, used uh, in the future as well for free. We offer that to any workplace who is interested uh, through this address as at CZ, open access to our I. Now, uh, we uh, were involved in Preval, a Preval study on the immune rate uh, uh, in the Czech Republic. You have heard of it. That was an epidemiological study or uh, evaluation across several cohorts. We did venous um, blood tests and um, we took uh, 9,000 uh, plus, uh, 9,324 persons. We took uh, blood tests uh, um, of in a week in the Czech Republic. We tested 26,000. Uh, 211 of whom 900 and uh, plus in Olomouc region. I guess uh, I shall never be involved in any large uh, uh, study or trial. I, I would like to thank everyone who got involved. Um, I'm not talk about. Uh, I mean, I'm not uh, gonna talk about the immune rate uh, in any further detail. Details. Why have people got uh, involved, or why were they included in the study or trial? Uh, there was a demand expressed across uh, the regions, not only in Prague. Those 10,000 vacancies or vacant places we sold in a way. We, I mean, in a couple of hours, um, so there was an immense interest or demand for being included in the sense, and that is important. Obviously, our general public supports science. Uh, many, most people said they wanted to contribute to knowledge uh, on, on new findings on COVID-19. Obviously, the general public is ready 
and willing to participate in the well-designed uh, activities. And it's obvious also in mapping the Czech Ghana, which we do with Charka Pospisil and other, in other areas where um, persons or general public shows major interest in uh, engaging. What were the conclusions? Well, I learned uh, that this is feasible, can be done in the Czech Republic. And I guess we can be far more ambitious in um, cooperating with different cohorts, and we can uh, get involved in such uh, trials or evaluations. We also uh, address this isolation or extraction system. I'm not going to go into details. We have fully automated uh, system validated uh, on uh, roughly 5,000 patient samples. PC man, the evaluation of this method, which is now done and ready, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, uh, we are better off uh, than uh, the standard. You and um, we were subject to external quality uh, control, the kit uh, fully successful, so we are just as uh, successful or at the same high level, high level as any other laboratories in the world. In this country, we have great devices, diagnostic devices or equipment, but if uh, an XYZ company tells you, well, we need the chemistry for or chemical testing for our uh, purposes in Germany and we shall not uh, simply export it, take it out of the country, then uh, it's good for nothing. Now the strength uh, uh, has been proven of the open access, uh, open systems. It is irreplaceable in crisis situations uh, where we were since the automatic systems on the one hand you put a vial on one hand and at the uh, other hand you get the results, but all these devices uh, stood still because they were not used. So the whole process was running for two months and we succeeded in developing a method. We licensed it in our spin-off of the Alamos University and we uh, also got a certification. So this is a certified uh, product and it's uh, made into several uh, types uh, of packaging. It can be used uh, routinely. It has been tested in several laboratories in an open system, which is great. So during a couple of months, if we can do this, usually the license Sync contract takes about six months or more, and the certification authorities take a long time to answer you. So this, for me, is really a great lesson. Uh, let uh, me introduce some other infrastructures. I only have three minutes left. Uh, it will be more than three minutes. Uh, so there is infrastructure for biobanking, and all uh, the materials are in the biobank. This is very, very uh, valuable. There is Professor Valik also participated in the validation of rapid test in the pre system. Them. And antibodies are also studied. So uh, you can see the immunity rate. And these are not only Dr. Valik's data, but worldwide. So the process of immunization is not the way to go, as we know. And then uh, the quality and the preval system. Infrastructure for clinical testing, it's Dr. Demlova is in charge, and infrastructure for evaluating, uh, for clinical evaluation. And they have done several clinical studies, which are now underway. 
our patients are an innovative treatment or treatment that is comparable. They can um, have remdesivir, leconavir, interferon, hydroxychloroquine, and others. This is very important. Thanks to the infrastructures, uh, people have a chance uh, to cure. Uh, the infrastructure system, there's a, again Dr. Bartuniak who is involved. First it was called an information system, then it developed uh, the information system called Corona Base. They have done over 7,000 tests. Here you can see all the academic labs and the number of tests. And I think we are still the biggest site. And then the Institute of Molecular Genetics, the Czech infrastructure, Derek. It uh, deals uh, with the analysis of protein structures. If we know these structures, I forgot to mention Dr. Sklenar, so we can then rationally design drugs, medical drugs. Uh, if we know there is the kind of pocket uh, where remdesivir fits in, if you don't know what the pocket looks like, uh, cannot design it. If you don't know what the, a lock looks like, you cannot design a key. This is really important. And uh, our colleagues uh, studied this, and as Dr. Korvalinka mentioned, there is a super prestigious publication, <coughs> communications. It's a matter of three months, so that was really fast. <coughs> Check bioimaging from one of the national hubs. Uh, then it studies uh, viruses uh, also in animal models. This has been used uh, clinically, the presence of coronavirus in uh, secretions of patients. Uh, uh, and uh, we try to test if they are infectious or not. Again, animal models, Dr. Sedlacek, the Czech Center for Phenogenomics, the mouse clinic. We don't have good uh, animal models for this uh, infection. Uh, the uh, mouse uh, receptor is not really so good. Uh, so the, we are now working on better models to study this uh, infection and gene modification. For example, by inhaling the virus, uh, the epithelial cells are transduced and over uh, the human receptor is overexpressed. And then the mouse becomes, uh, in effect, susceptible to the virus. In the future, we need an animal facility, maybe level two, three, or four. There is such a facility in the Czech Republic. Many companies ask for collaboration. <coughs> And we don't have the capacity to work with all of them. There is a company called Dintec for veterinary vaccines, including coronavirus. So uh, it's not for the human vaccine, but there are many coronavirus diseases in animals, very relevant, like bovine coronavirus. Uh, the calves have a kind of cold, but an old cow uh, can um, die. So it's a simulation situation that imitates the situation in human medicine. 
It was not meant pejoratively speaking about an old cow, but great assistance came from infrastructures, from InfraCZ and Elixir. They offer supercomputers and uh, networks. Also, uh, we uh, were helped in the infrastructure. An infrastructure was uh, built by them for our servers and everything we needed urgently to improve our capacity and connectivity. Our colleagues are also involved in many European initiatives for modeling the virus, uh, measuring the effect of drugs. And last but not least, we have the social <coughs> scientific infrastructures, several projects like SHARE. One of them is called Transformation of the Czech Society. The infection spread differently in Italy and here, also thanks to our social conventions. There are many hidden or latent things we should pay attention to. So, a long-term household survey has been used and some modification in household behavior, all that has affected the uh, dissemination of the virus. And we think even the participation in screening preventive programs is conditioned by convention, social status, and other factors, which technically we can have super screening programs for cancer, but if people don't turn up for the screening, it's no good. Conclusions, uh, you can see research, infrastructures and institutions, they have flexibly responded to uh, the uh, solution of the crisis. They have turned out to be very flexible and adaptive. Commercial applications are already here. There will be more of them. There was also a hackathon. Uh, I haven't mentioned the outcomes, but many of the outputs uh, in collaboration with academic sites are really exceptional. A very rapid response of various institutions and the government. The government is often criticized for how it handled the crisis. But uh, I know it's difficult to please the Czech population. We are always dissatisfied, and maybe that's why we are successful. Because if you are not satisfied, you are driven uh, to achieve something. But I think the government has handled it well. Grant agencies have adapted, they opened new calls, and in many countries they can only dream about it. We had a teleconference with about 80 institutions across Europe, Italy, Spain, Sweden, much a different uh, institution. So. We should be really grateful. The matter is how it will be handled in the future. Research uh, structures have, uh, have, have uh, become part of the infrastructure, so the Crisis Act uh, does not have to be modified. Realistically, it has turned out that all these structures work. New strategies of COVID testing are being drafted. The importance of laboratories is described in uh, uh, this new draft. I hope we'll collaborate with colleagues uh, uh, in testing or in coping with other threats for public health. And I want to thank the huge team of people who have participated. 
also research infrastructures, ministries, agencies. They have been extremely welcoming, and I hope that the speed and welcoming spirit will stay with us.